If all participants uh, that are on, or at least the panelists, if you guys could mute. We'll get started here in just a couple of minutes.
Well, good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we have some participants out there, so it's six o'clock. And uh, my name's Hal Gregory. I'm superintendent with Oregon City Schools, and we have our uh, leadership team joining us tonight. And uh, we're basically uh, doing this each Wednesday with the opportunity to answer your questions. So uh, I'll give, just give a brief update on what's happening around Oregon City Schools, and then we'll really just launch right into our question and answer section. Um, the, for the participants that are on, on the call tonight, all you need to do is go to the Q&A section and uh, type in an answer or type in a question. And our panelists will be um, uh, reviewing those questions along with myself. And we're gonna do something a little bit different this week, uh, last week when we had this, um, we went a couple hours and we were just taking each question one by one and the panelists weren't answering them specifically if they had the answer. So uh, based on the number of questions, we're gonna go ahead and just have the panelists um, answer those questions independently of myself. And then if those are answered, they will move over from the open section into the answered section. Does that make sense? So we'll see how many questions we get and, uh, and go from there. But the goal is to be here for at least an hour. Uh, if it doesn't take that long, that's fine. If, if it takes a little bit longer, that's fine too. But, but our goal is to, to be here about an hour and uh, answer as many questions as, as you might have. Or if, uh, if, if there are no questions, then we'll provide the updates and, and uh, look forward to doing this again next, next Wednesday. So, um, so let me just start with uh, what's happening. So this week, actually on Friday, last Friday, our teachers started back uh, on, on the basic calendar that we had already laid out prior to all the COVID uh, with a work day. And, and this week's really been a, a week of, of training uh, and, and thinking through all the, uh, uh, the final tasks that we need to get in place and have in place and understand before next week. Um, so we, we've been working hard on, on refreshing memories, training on some new technologies, uh, finalizing our student schedules, all those types of things these first couple of days. Uh, we had, the, uh, had a guest speaker in Tim Kite, who, who's a motivational speaker and talks about the power of understanding how to react to situations. And it is quite amazing um, how someone can speak and share his thoughts and, and totally reframe how you're thinking. And, and one of the best takeaways that I have from that is that we all have to stay positive when we're going through things like this. We all have to make decisions, but when we make those decisions, let's make them in a disciplined way and not in a highly emotional way. And, and, and obviously emotions run real high right now in a lot of different areas. And so our decisions are thought out. Uh, we're working through those every single day um, to be the best decision possible at the time. So just some updates. Uh, like I said, our, our teachers are back in session. They're working in the school buildings and going about uh, their trainings and so forth through the end of this week. Uh, laptop or device distribution started today at Clay High School. Uh, that runs through Friday from, from everything I've seen and heard that the uh, Clay High School distribution is, has gone well today. So, so thank you to all the kids that have come through and, and to all the high school staff that have put that together and made that, made that flow and work. Um, there's still kids coming in right now, as I see, or, or just finishing up possibly, but uh, uh, nice flow steady today. And again, uh, tomorrow is FACET and Eisenhower's uh, device distribution. And next week is the elementaries when the meetings are set with the individual families. So we believe that's going real well and, uh, and without a hitch. So the big announcement this week was from the governor's office related to athletics. So those of you that don't know, and I believe most of you probably do know, that athletics will be allowed to continue in the state of Ohio, uh, at least as of today, um, with uh, at Clay here with uh, contests starting as early as tomorrow night, or I'm sorry, Friday night, with our first home soccer game, Football Friday. <laughs> uh, so we're going to have host that game, and it's going to start at five o'clock. So we're in a little bit of scramble mode though, because that decision just was announced yesterday. And we still haven't seen the final guidance. So we're, we're going by what we've heard from the governor. Uh, the governor did have his two o'clock press conference yesterday, but then did have some private, if you will, Zooms with superintendents and coaches and ADs uh, later throughout the day to kind of reiterate uh, what his message was. But his message was pretty simple. 
Uh, we need to uh, encourage our kids and have our kids, you know, if, if, if possible, uh, participate in athletic games and contests. Uh, he allowed and lifted the, the contact sports, um, I guess, inability to, to have scrimmages or contests. So that's been lifted, which allows the games to proceed. In our league, we're going to have a, or in our state, we're going to have a six game schedule for football. Uh, all other sports will be co competing in their regular schedule, as far as I know, uh, unless games or teams can't compete, but the schedule will go on as planned. The one big difference, which is a big difference, is the number of participants that will be allowed to uh, attend the games. And, and the governor was very clear that the only participants that are going to be allowed to come to contests or games will be parents or loved ones. And so we're putting together our plan for that. And essentially what that looks like in Oregon City Schools is, is parents of each kid um, or each student will be assigned a code that then their family can purchase tickets through our online uh, hometown ticketing uh, process. So I know uh, Mark Beach, our athletic director has been working all day on uh, finalizing that and, and he'll be getting the word out on how to go about doing that. So uh, they will be tickets that you can purchase as a family. And, uh, and then we will obviously have specific spots within the stadium uh, or within uh, the gymnasium about where you sit. We do have to wear masks. All participants, family members will have to wear masks who are at games, whether they're inside or outside. So um, it's going to be not your typical uh, experiences at contests, but at least the kids get to play. At least families get to see their kids participate. But with that comes the caveat that please, uh, you know, if you have a student athlete, encourage your kids to not uh, take the idea of wearing a mask and um, putting themselves in, in awkward or dangerous situations, if you will. We, we can't have that. Uh, we need our, our student athletes to pay attention to the rules, both here at school and wherever they go after school, whether it's going to a restaurant, whether it's going to a friend's house, whether it's going to a party, any of those types of things, you know, I'm encouraging everyone to avoid all those things. <laughs> but because what we, the last thing we want to do is have one of our teams shut down uh, due to a COVID outbreak. And uh, so we're just encouraging all our families to, to uh, reiterate that with their student athletes, that it's of vital importance to, to uh, follow the rules, wear your masks, do those things so you're not putting any jeopardy or your teammates in jeopardy. So obviously, any, if there's any questions that come about in sports, we'll do our best to answer that. I do know last night, Mr. Beach and uh, Mr. Jerski hosted the uh, uh, fall parent meeting when a lot of the questions were answered. And, uh, and essentially, though, those will be the only folks that will be involved in our contest. So we'll make sure we get the word out. Uh, we will be sending information out, though, about our streaming program that we have both inside the, the uh uh, gym and outside at the football stadium. So you will be able to purchase a subscription to watch the games live uh, through our, our system. So we'll be getting that word out here uh, very quickly. I talked about the device distribution. So, um, um, you know, obviously, if there's questions that come up once you get the device, you know, we'll be working through all those questions uh, within the buildings uh, and, and answering those, you know, and, and however you reach out. So reach out to your principals, reach out to whomever uh, that you have a contact with, your teacher, if you are having problems, because we do want to help that. That's really why next week we're kind of taking a soft start to our school year, knowing that we may have questions about how to use things, how to set up things. Uh, hopefully directions are clear. Uh, the devices in of themselves, it's fairly, you know, fairly simple to, to work through. But, but again, we know that there'll be questions and we'll do whatever we can to, to help that. Hal, if I may interject. Yeah. Um, there is a student help desk email account yes. and it's at the bottom of the direction sheet that every student got in how to log on. So you can, if you are having technical difficulties with your Chromebook or uh, other difficulties, uh, you can email that uh, information to that email address and the tech department monitors that. If it's something curricular, something about the course or whatnot, then yes, that should go through your uh, your student's teacher or uh, your building principal. Good, thank you. What was that address again? Uh, it is student underscore help desk at OregonCS.org. I can, um, and I can uh, put that in the answer. Um, Bethany's question, why did my high schooler get a Chromebook from STAR? Um, 
Uh, do you want me to address that, Hal, or do you want to address that to Bethany? Yeah, well, well we, why don't you just type an answer in there and we'll kind of come back to the questions we'll here once I go through, you know, just a couple of more things. And, and Oh, okay. Uh, okay, very good. Yep. Yeah, so that's kind of what we want to do is, as there's questions that one of you as, uh, you know, leaders know the answer to, go ahead and just type that answer in and the audience can go ahead and go in the question and answer and see, see the answer and read that. So hopefully that'll work. We'll try it. <laughs> you know, if it's not working, let me know, sir, for sure. Um, so uh, so well, there's obviously some sports questions and things, but fees has been a, a question uh, that has come up and continues to come up. And I just want to reiterate kind of our, our thought right now on, on uh, fees, all right? Fees in general. There's a lot of questions on why should I have to pay this fee or that fee whether it's the general fee, a career tech fee, a athletic fee, a band fee, any one of those fees. And there's a lot of questions about why should we because we're not there utilizing it. And so we understand that there's a lot of questions and frankly, there's some answers that we don't have related to fees uh, yet because we don't know exactly how this is all gonna play out and what the fees uh, should be reduced by if any. So we're going to take our time, we're going to look at the situation, but what, what we've said and put out to the public is this. If you haven't paid your fees, and again, this applies to all fees, whether it's athletics, whether it's the general fee, band fee, career tech fees, if you haven't paid your fees, hold off and don't pay them yet, okay? Um, if you have paid your fees, and in the future, we adjust those fees lower, then we will issue you a refund. So, I mean, that's as, as simple as I can make it at this point in time with fees. We're, it's not gonna impact our programming right now. Kids will still be allowed to participate in the classes. Kids will still be allowed to participate in sports. We understand this is a, a unique time that we're all going through and it's, there's a lot of questions about it. So we wanna be fair to the public and we want the public to be fair to us. So we're gonna evaluate that. We're gonna have more conversations once the school year gets running and determine what fees actually need and are appropriate to be paid and which fees are not, okay? So just wanted to address fees up front because I know we'll probably get questions, a few questions on, on fees and I know there, I've had a few just today on, on some athletic fees. Okay, I, I just want to kind of close with just some, you know, kind of some updates and, and just kind of thank the community uh, for, for how they are approaching um, the differences that we have going on, you know, the difference of opinions. And, and, and I got to say that I am very proud of the community because um, there are a lot of opinions about what is right and what is wrong <laughs> related to the start of the school year and just school in general. I'm well aware of that. Um, there isn't an hour that doesn't go by that, that, that I don't receive an email or a text or a phone call or something uh, regarding an opinion on how we should start school or something. Totally understand that. You know what? It's everyone's right. I want to hear those things and it, 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 it all matters. Um, so I, I, I do support the continuation of, of people sharing their opinions and I do support the 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 idea that um, we're going to stay the course too. Um, right now, we, we are opening up remote and there's a lot of questions about, well, why don't we allow in-person and everything? So um, I just want everyone to know that we're, we're not closing the door on bringing kids back to school, all right? I mean, that door is, is open, okay? But the, the, the problem is, is we're not going to do it right away. And, and so, I just want people to understand that we have a plan in place and it's just not easy to flip a plan overnight. And, and I am listening. I do hear the people that say they want their, their kids in school. And I also hear the people that say, you know, you're doing the right thing for keeping it remote right now. And, it, and it's a back and forth. Um, big kudos though to everyone that went to the, the gathering at Clay High School the other night. It was done with respect. Uh, it was done in an organized, peaceful way. Um, the emails that I'm getting are, are very polite. Uh, they are very civil. I mean, I can't say enough about how people are approaching the differences. And I, and I just want to make that point and thank you for, for keeping that tone. It makes a big difference uh, to how we approach where we want to end up and the outcome we want to have for our kids. So 
the plan right now is to, to start remote and we are gonna be uh, sending out a parent survey. That was one of the ideas that came out of the uh, gathering the other night at Clay High School. Uh, we'll be putting that together. It'll be a simple, very easily understood and, and easy to respond to survey that we'll put out the week after we return from the Labor Day weekend. So I'll be working on that with the members of the Board of Education and we will um, get, a, get a real good feeling of, of where the community is at at that point. Uh, we also, at that, around that same time, in the middle of that September period is when we're looking at you know, slowly bringing in some of our special needs kids, some of our programs, and, and slowly starting to reintroduce kids back into our buildings. And we'll also have a whole much, uh, a much better understanding of the landscape and what's going on in Lucas County uh, and also the state of Ohio. So please be patient with us. We understand uh, what people want and, and um, the idea of getting kids back in school is all of our goal. There, there's no one that doesn't have that goal. But sometimes it's just going to take a little bit more um, patience to get there. So with that being said, we'll, we'll just kind of jump into some of the questions, uh, if that's okay. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pop this up and just start reading them. And again, uh, I don't know, uh, you know, one of the questions here, do sports fee need to be paid in full for kids to be able to participate? I think I answered that one. Uh, the answer is kids can participate. So, so don't panic about those fees at this point in time. Um, so next question, why would there be a, a charge for the live stream. I understand if we, would, if, if we were not in COVID, uh, there being a fee, but at this time, people attend is limited. Yeah, we, we, we contract with a third party vendor and my understanding is that it's not our call. If it's our call, I agree with you, but I don't believe it is our call. So uh, the, the company that runs the live streaming NHFS um, uh, has set a very strict um, payment amount is my understanding that is across the state of Ohio for anyone that signs up for those. Next question, will there still be an in-service Monday the 21st, no school? Uh, right now we intend to follow our calendar as written, except for these first couple of weeks that are a little bit, you know, different. So yes, at this point in time, there'll be an in-service uh, planned. Uh, Mrs. Conco, is there anything I'm missing with that one? There is not anything that you're missing in regards to that. As you said, we will go ahead and stick with our calendar. Okay, thank you. Okay, another calendar question. Uh, will there be an updated school calendar? The one sent out recently still reflects the 17th as a start date. Just curi curious if the uh, current scheduled days off as still are still valid. Yes, um, we could certainly send something out, uh, but but moving forward from really this next week on, the calendar is going to remain the same unless there's some unknown information that we're not aware of um, that, that hits us. So that calendar will remain the same. You can plan on your um, holiday breaks being the same. You can plan on your in-service days being the same. Uh, again, unless there's some new information that comes our way that, that we're not aware of. Okay, um, with the risk of COVID-19 spreading through aerosols, what safety protocols are you implementing in the ban room to keep students and directors safe when returning to in-person classes? Uh, I don't know, Mr. Sandwich, do you wanna address specifically the ban room? Uh, I mean, I believe we're probably doing all the same precautions in the ban room as we are across the district. We are, we, um, we are employing a hospital grade disinfectant in all of our classrooms. The teacher will also have spray bottle of this disinfectant that kills it. Um, it it's, a, it's an interesting question because of the aerosol and the additional aerosol that you have in both choir and band. But at this point, we don't have a, a mechanism or a plan to clean it any other way or disinfect it any other way. Uh, after school, we will also disinfect uh, with an electrostatic sprayer that will will actually make it cling to everything and, and disinfect it even more thoroughly. Um, so we feel pretty confident in it, uh, but the aerosol question is difficult to answer. Yeah, so what we can do is we can get with Mr. Kudzal and, and Mr. Sneed and certainly take a deeper look into how they're going to perform band and same at the junior high. 
um, and take a look at you know what their plan is. But I know all three of those individuals are are very much on top of the understanding on the aerosol, how it projects. I know more and more information is coming out through their professional organizations. So so we'll keep that question uh, alive, and uh, we'll do a little bit more follow up specifically on that. I know Bandcamp and 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 band in general has kind of been delayed a little bit, and uh, at least at the high school level. So uh, once we once we kind of decide, and again, kids aren't aren't back in school for quite some time. So we're we're gonna we're gonna work through those issues. Um, you know, we have a little bit of time to to have a final plan on those. Um, okay, what services will be offered to parents who work and their children need to be online during work hours and attendance is being kept? So again, yeah, we, we, we've been wrestling and talking about this question quite a bit. Um, I don't know, Ms. Conco, if you want to tackle it or any one of the principals maybe, um, just to start. I can start. We've had those conversations with our staff members. They're well aware that there are going to be situations where students are not going to be able to log in during the scheduled times. So we will be posting um, additional videos, additional resources and support for those kiddos um, via Google Classroom, and Schoology so we can keep those kids moving along with the rest of the class the best that we can. We know there's going to be, uh, you know, issues with attendance and uh, being on every live Zoom for families and we're working through that. We are, going to apply, we are going to apply as much flexibility as we can. And again, I want to go back to the real bottom line here. It's, it's not attendance as much as it is completing and, and doing the work and being a part of the learning process, okay? We want kids to be engaged uh, as much as possible uh, in the learning process while, while we're remote. Um, and, and so we know attendance in and of itself, like just coming to it doesn't necessarily mean they're gonna do the work. So really most of our attendance is going to be circled around um, how much uh, work completion is, is done by the kids. Next question, have you looked at the COVID stats that are specific to Oregon or are decisions being made strictly on Lucas County? So uh, yeah, just yesterday I talked with uh, the Lucas County Health Commissioner and gave him a call to kind of find out where we're at. And uh, I look every day on their website and there's a little bit of a zip code, uh, you know, map that talks about the number of cases. And, and I asked him, so Lucas County is still solidly in the red, but but on a, on a decline, which is fantastic. Just, it's, it's very much like the state of Ohio. Um, the state of Ohio is on a bit of a decline overall with COVID cases and in all the urban areas, right? So like Lucas County, Franklin County, Cuyahoga County, they're on the downslope. Uh, again, I don't know if it's a big downslope, but they're, they're, they're trending down right now. So, um, of course, Oregon and Lucas County is trending down a little bit. So I asked him specifically about where is Oregon, and Oregon is not in the highest amount, and, and we didn't talk specific numbers, but they're certainly not in the lowest. And if you, look, if you look at the number of confirmed cases by their zip code list, okay, and they do it by, by um, number of COVID cases, we are blue, which is the third from the highest, which, which simply means we have between 309 and 385 COVID cases in our zip code. At least that's the Oregon zip code. Now you go east of here and you go into the Jerusalem Township, they have between one and 77. They're very rural. I don't know the exact number. Um, but here in Oregon uh, proper, that we're, we're, we're in the third from the highest number. And again, the highest is between 463 and 539 cases. So, so again, I mean, we're, we, we are not the worst in Lucas County in terms of the zip codes, but we're certainly you know, not in the lowest, although part of our district is uh, in, in, out in the rural area of Jerusalem Township. So again, you know, there isn't any one stat that is making this determination. Uh, and again, remember the, the Lucas County Health Commissioner and the board did make a pretty strong recommendation for school districts within the county. And that has to mean something. And it does mean something. My granddaughter will be in kindergarten this year. How many hours a day will be remote? Good question. Uh, 
Anybody want to answer that and jump in? Yep, I can go ahead and jump in on that. Um, for our kindergarten students, we have any live sessions that we will be broadcasting taking place during the morning hours. So we try to kind of confine when those times may be and then having the students work more independently um, in the afternoon. But as far as a time frame, it might vary from day to day, but I would say that a, student, a kindergarten student wouldn't be online live in a, in a Zoom session like we are right now more than an hour per day. The kindergarten teachers will be posting when they will be live for the week. So everybody will know, you know the, the students and the parents who are in that classroom, they will know when that teacher will be online teaching um, and we'll be able to log in at those times. But like I said, most likely no more than one hour per day. We have breaks built into their schedule um, because we understand that, that they are going to need time away from the screen. They're going to need to be active and, and having a variety of activities to engage in in order to best learn the content. Yeah, these little kindergartners, it's, it's a whole brand new world. It's not your typical start for these, these kids and their families and those that haven't had a kid in school and then they have to start this way, it's gotta be tough. So uh, obviously that's one of the reasons we wanted to bring in each family starting next week and, and have a conversation and, and help, help transition these little guys as best we can. I, I do want to just provide one more clarifying point as I reread the question. Um, we're going to have a mix of Zoom sessions as well as independent activities that are to be done um, by our kindergarten students. So when I say an hour, that's not total in terms of all of the, the time in which they're going to be engaging in academic work. That would just be a maximum in terms of how often they're going to be online live with their teacher, but there will be additional activities that the teacher will, will provide, that that student will complete throughout the week in order to complete their academic schedule. So I just wanted to clarify that, that that hour that I refer to is just um, a session like this, where the teachers and the students are interacting, but there will be additional work that they need to complete. Good, thank you. Okay. Um, Will there be any in-person tutoring for kids that fall further behind than they already are from the school closure? Um, I guess I'll just, I'll start with, with the word school closure that, you know, just because we're not in the building, we are still holding school. Um, we are still considering, uh, you know, what we're doing education, albeit different than what we're all used to for sure. Um, so obviously as we go through the course of this and kids truly need help, and, and families and students are reaching out, we're gonna provide that help. Uh, we do that whether we're in school, out of school, wherever we're at, we're gonna provide help to kids. Um, so obviously this is impacting a lot of folks, um, you know, but, but it, it's, it's, it's understandable that kids are gonna fall behind. We, we understand that, uh, but we'll, we'll do, I guess we'll do everything we can to, to help support those kids when we, if we know they're struggling and, and uh, they need that extra help. Not sure what that looks like. It can look very different based on the student and the, and the uh, course they're taking or the class they're taking. I did want to add that depending on the level, um, we have time built into the teacher's schedule as well as the student's academic schedule to have small group instruction. So it can be differentiated for a student who may um, have missed a few skills last year. We'll have opportunities for teachers to work with kids to kind of fill in those gaps. Those times can also be used for um, students who might need a little bit of acceleration as well. Um, so that time is built into the teacher and student schedule. And for our, for our older kids, we have student assistance times. Uh, once again, available for the teachers and the students to be able to connect um, so we can fill in some of those gaps as necessary. Thank you. So in the board meeting last night, I thought Hal said he would uh, be open to bringing children back in sooner than the 15th. If Lucas County numbers go down, we are currently out of the top counties as of yesterday. According to the above question by Ms. Blair, that isn't true today. Yeah, if I, if I misrepresented my thoughts uh, last night at the board meeting, I do apologize for that. What I was referencing there is uh, I am very open to, to reading the data and, and 
and Luke, and what I was referencing was that the conversation I had with Lucas County Health Commissioner that they might be looking if if the trends were to continue as they are. And again, as he put it, you know, no promises. We have no idea for sure. But if they were to continue to continue this downward trend, that their health board might be open again. He, he hasn't had this conversation and was not making it a, a statement. It was a, a conversation that we had, though, that they would be possibly open to reviewing all the data and making a different recommendation. And if a different recommendation came out from the Lucas County Health Department prior to October 1st, which is the date they have put out there as of now, then we would have to consider and look at all that data and information about uh, our next steps. But again, right now, our plan is to continue to, to work the remote plan um, and see what happens for second quarter. Um, again, if there's a whole bunch of new information that all points and makes sense to doing something different than our current plan, then yes, we're going to look at that. Uh, but if it doesn't, then we're gonna continue to work our plan. So, and again, I, I know people are, are very, um, um, hopeful of a you know of a of a date or to 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 move up the date of october or the second quarter i understand that but i'm not going to be moving up the date until i have solid information that that um gives me enough comfort and our board again it's up to our board of education as well as me so it's not how gregory's sole decision uh what we do and what we don't do it's it's working with our board of education and uh looking at all the data and the health commissioner Our numbers are lower than Sylvania and they have a bigger school district, yet they are going back a month before us. Do you confer with other local supers to get their thoughts and protocols on how they feel it is a safe to bring their children back? Yeah, I, I text and email and converse with uh, all the Lucas County superintendents every single day. Uh, I know where they stand. I know where their pressures are. I know where their feelings are. Um, we are much more aligned in our thinking, but obviously each district has to make their own decisions based on uh, their own boards of education, their own superintendents, um, and their own, uh, anal I guess, analyzing of the data, right? Um, that's what people are doing across the country. There's a reason that in the state of Ohio, there's districts that are going back with everyone. There are districts that are going back hybrid, and there are districts going back remote. And you can say more are going back all in than remote, but most of the larger county area schools are going back remote. I mean, there's, there's data for everything that, you know, you, you, you want to look for. So, but yes, I, I do converse with the Lucas County superintendents. I think they're all a great group. Uh, we, have a, we have a lot of, um, you know, how do I want to say this? We have a lot of information we share every single day and it helps all of us get through the day uh, and, and also helps all of us kind of understand what the landscape of, of, of Lucas County is. Okay, a couple of questions were already answered. And so, like I said earlier in the meeting, they're kind of popping over into the answered column. So I'm not really gonna go into the answered columns if they've been typed in. So, um, uh, unless there's something that that I need to address. So just, you know, let me know that. So what about kids with an IEP? How will they be assessed for the 2021 school year? Um, I'll take a quick stab at it. And then Ms. Gosick, if you, if, if you could maybe jump in. But, but uh, our kids that are currently on an IEP are, you know, are, are reassessed like every year as they move through the uh, IEP process. In other words, there's an IEP meeting held every single year with those families that they review the goals and objectives that are in those plans. All of those things will occur just as they have before, except they may be remote and not in person. Uh, if they are up for a triennial review, they will be assessed, brought in probably on an individual basis with our school psychologist and or teacher and assessed uh, in person. Um, to get the updated data that we do every three years. So I don't know, Ms. Kosick, if you want to jump in on that one. Yeah, we have actually already started um, the uh, assessments for students to see if they uh, 
qualify for um, an IEP or if they need to be reevaluated. So we have already started that this week, bringing in students one-on-one uh, -on -one with the psychologist. We've got our uh, barriers up and everything so that it's being done safely so that we're meeting the uh, federal timelines and getting those assessments done. Um, the intervention specialist will definitely be reaching out to parents, talking with them throughout the year um, about their progress on the goals that are in their students' IEP and um, doing our best to meet those remotely and um, if need be, uh, contacting the parent if the teacher needs to meet with the student to uh, really finalize on something to reassess. Um, we're getting things in place to do that as well. So um, I definitely feel the uh, intervention specialist will be um, evaluating uh, the students to make sure that they are making progress. Good, thank you. Um, are the Chromeback Chromebooks compatible with CCP classes? Um, again, not knowing which CCP class in, in each of the colleges that are happening, I would say the majority of, of online classes are compatible with an online a device like a Chromebook. Uh, anybody else need want to address that one? I was typing and didn't oh, get okay. quite through it. You're hitting the questions really fast, so this is great. Um, but yeah, you are correct. The Chromebooks can accomplish any task that can be accomplished uh, using a web browser. So if, uh, if, if there are specific concerns or questions or things that the student is not able to do, uh, then that can be addressed through our student help desk email account. Good, thank you. Uh, is there an update on staffing? Will there be any reductions in hours or layoffs for any of our teachers or staff? Uh, we are there, right now we're not looking at any layoffs for any of our teachers. Uh, we are working with our classified union and believe we have a uh, memorandum of understanding that will address uh, several of our uh, classified employees um, in adjusting their days. So that's all I really want to say about that. But the, the, the simple answer is uh, we are working through on the classified staff uh, an MOU that will uh, benefit, you know, the district obviously in some savings but also uh, help support those individuals um, personally. Okay, next question. Uh, Jamie, you, you have some stats on there from Lucas County and I understand where you're going with your question and can you help me understand why this data justifies closing? Uh, again, you know, we, we can talk, we talk a lot. Um, I understand where your point of view is. Um, if it were that easy, it would be that easy, but it's not. So uh, again, statistics are just one piece of this entire decision. Um, you know, the community has to understand that, that there's a lot of factors that go into this. And, and again, none of it's easy. And, and depending on your point of view, it, it, it's, it's right or it's wrong. Um, it's, there's not a lot of in-between with, with people. So, and I, I truly understand that. And I just wanna reiterate, we are gonna get back to school at some point, okay? We, we need to stay level-headed throughout this thing, all of us do. And if we stay level-headed, you know, if we, we continue to work together and not let it destroy relationships and not let it, um, you know, become combative in any way, and it hasn't yet. And that, you know, I said that earlier in the meeting, I've been very proud of, of, uh, of everyone. And again, I have no problem with, with questions and, and those types of things. But at the end of the day, you know, we're, we're, we're looking at everything and, and making decisions and, and uh, you know, staff, I mean, just, just having staff uh, comfortable working with, you know, a whole bunch of kids in the building has been a challenge. Um, you know, staff are concerned because really the, the idea of kids in school, the concern isn't as much kid to kid although it's there as it is kid to adult, right? And kid to adult to maybe another adult or to a, um, a person with an underlying condition. And, and there's a lot of you know, connections that, that happen uh, with this. So, so again, we're, we're, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to uh, dodge the question, but, but statistics can tell you whatever you want them to tell you. I totally understand that. Um, but right now working with our Board of Education in the, in the Lucas County Health Department recommendation, uh, this is our plan to start and, and we'll see where it leads us. Is there a plan for parent teacher conferences? I don't know, Ms. Conco or one of the principals? Yeah. 
as we begin the school year, we are doing a mix of conferencing with parents. We do have some parents that are coming in face to face one on one. Um, we're also doing some zoom zoom conferences with parents as well as we get the school year up and started. I think with conferences occurring in November. I think we will take a look at what's happening in our community, what you know our situation is, and make that decision as to whether conferences will be um, in person or whether they will be via Zoom. I think we will make that decision as that date gets a little bit closer because we have a couple months to kind of see how um, our cases are and, and what the situation is with COVID in Lucas County. Yeah, so the idea of parent-teacher conferences as we as we move into the into the fall, um, or you know throughout the school year, uh, we have parent-teacher conferences planned, and and I think as of right now we are planning on doing those. I think the only difference would be, right? We might do them virtually, just depending on on, on the situation that that we're in at that particular time. But uh, obviously, communication with with our families is going to be crucial uh, and critical. Yes, I don't see them being canceled. It, like you said, they're, they're not, we're not looking to cancel them. It will be a decision as to whether or not they would be in person or remote. Good. I do just want to go to one question that was asked and it was about the Chromebooks versus MacBooks and uh, that there were some people at the high school surprised that we had Chromebooks versus MacBooks. We made a decision, gosh, uh, when did we make that decision, Mrs. Schiavone, that back, back maybe as early as February? Ooh. of last year what well, the decision to to go down the route of chromebooks yeah um yeah it it, it we've been evaluating and um you know and and doing a, a lot of um uh, investigating and comparing uh for quite some time but yes the initial the the final decision let's move forward and i think we're going down the right path was uh around february yeah, so, so the reason behind I me, mean, obviously, uh, seven years ago, eight years ago, we purchased MacBooks for uh, the high school. And those MacBooks cost somewhere between $900 and $1,000, somewhere in that range, maybe a little off. But um, these MacBooks were starting to get real old, real beat up, and their batteries were starting to, to die. And the replacement of batteries was going to be very, very expensive. And we needed to make a decision on what to do. And it was coming up pretty quickly. Uh, so we had to, we also had to look at our finances and our, and our, our fiscal responsibility with what we could realistically do moving forward. And the reality is that Chromebooks and, and, and the, okay, let me, the evolution of technology with Chromebooks, but also the evolution of online and in the cloud software lended itself to moving to a cost savings, you know, moving to Chromebooks with a cost savings of down to like 200 and maybe $30, 200 to $230 a Chromebook. And when we just looked at the cost benefit, we, we just felt as a district, I mean, the Board of Education did do a vote, had a vote on this, supported this initiative uh, a while back. And uh, we, we vetted it out with all our teachers and the teachers felt comfortable with, with this decision. So, so yeah, today might've been the first day that, that somebody was expecting to get their MacBook back and got a Chromebook. So I totally understand that question. And, uh, you know, I guess we didn't maybe do a great job of putting that out there, but uh, knowing that we were continuing to be a one on one device district, which we're still proud of, um, and one of the first in the area that did that, uh, we believe that the Chromebooks will be able to handle what, what we're going to ask the kids to do for sure. All right, just going to jump back. There's been just a couple of more questions here. Um, somebody uh, put a comment up there. Again, I want to just thank all of you for your time, effort, and always going the extra mile and keeping a smile on your face while doing it. Well, well thank you very much. Um, you know, we're, we're all going to, I've said it before, we're all going to get through this together. I love being in Oregon. I've been out here 18 years. Um, can't say it's not been without challenges, but, you know, I look at the screen and I look at the team that I have around me and I, and I know the teaching staff really well and I know our classified staff. I mean, we've got a great group of people that love your kids and care about your kids. Um, don't let the fact that we're remote or not remote, you know, you know, lead you astray from the fact that we care about your kids because we do deeply care about your kids and we'll continue to care about your kids. Um, we just also believe that, that this is a time that, that you know, we've got to look at safety and, and, uh, and again, um, hopefully we'll be out of this sooner than later. 
Um, are we able to pay a $50 insurance fee for the Chromebooks? I want to make sure we are able to cover them if something comes up. So that's a question, you know, we had a lot of debate on that. I don't know, Mr. Giovanni, if you want to, if you want to um, address that. Basically what, what we've done is eliminated the, the, the insurance fee altogether. But what we are saying is if, if through negligence that someone gets, you know, destroys a machine, then we're going to have to work with you on paying for that machine. And so, again, we're hoping that that isn't the case. And, and if we have just a few of those, uh, you know, that probably will be it. So, you know, I just want to, um, I guess, implore you to take good care of it and do your best. We know accidents happen. We, we understand that. Uh, we'll be addressing those situations, I guess, independently or one-on-one. -on -one. And I can also elaborate on that a little bit in that um, if you are accustomed to, um, you know, damages that happen with a MacBook, uh, the replacement costs for cracked screens, et cetera, are much more reasonable than, um, than what they were with the MacBooks. So, um, I mean, if you were to do the math uh, and you have a student that cracks a screen, you paying any difference in addition or over and above the $25 is gonna be less than your $50 insurance. Uh, and even if a student had the ins is, is in a part of the insurance program the way we had it before and the student's damage was deemed to be negligence, the insurance still didn't cover that. So it's a matter of whether it's something they did by being negligent or um, accidents happen. It was it, it kind of the basis of that. Thank you. Yeah, again, just thanking me for, for touching base on, on uh, the idea that the uh, Max versus Chromebooks. Yeah, so, so, you know, hopefully we can continue to get that word out and uh, that the machines and the devices will do what they need to do for our kids. Uh, but really that became a, a cost benefit financial situation and, and it was just time that we had to make a decision. So again, apologize for maybe not putting that word out as clearly as possible. Um, been a strange five months, so that was probably one of the last things that I was thinking about to be completely honest with you. Um, my Clay student picked up a computer today and is labeled Eisenhower. I'm just curious, did the Eisenhower computers get handed out to Clay? So, all right, so let me, let me address this a little bit. Um, we, we have a unique situation and some of the other Lucas County districts are struggling. I'm just gonna kind of give you a quick overview because uh, it's, it's really, we're very fortunate uh, to be where we're at. So um, we, when we traded in, when we made the decision to get Chromebooks, we traded in our Macs. We collected them all at the end of the year and we have a third party broker that uh, is selling those on our behalf and we're going to get whatever we get out of them back to the district. So we ordered new Chromebooks, okay? So we have an order for new Chromebooks. We ordered them six months ago, five months ago, six months ago. From the time Chromebooks were ordered to now, many things have happened across the United States and in China. Long story short, we do not have those new Chromebooks. Okay, of no, pro of no fault of our own, and we are not alone. Uh, I know there's at least three other districts in Lucas County that have not received their order of Chromebooks. So Ms. Schiavone working with uh, our, our CDW rep, which is the person that we, you know, the, the company that we work with, uh, we had to find a solution because now we don't have our MacBooks and now we don't have our new Chromebooks. Now what, right? So we were fortunate to be able to work with a local district down south, southwest uh, city, and purchase some of their used or their older Chromebooks. So we purchased some of their older Chromebooks that will allow us to uh, at least bridge the gap between the start of the school year and when our new ones arrive, which could be any day. We don't know, right? It's, it's very much uh, an unknown at this point. So because of that, we're going to be giving some of these older Chromebooks that still work well and will still do what we need them to do to our younger grades, our K1 and 2. And then because of that, we shifted some of the Chromebooks from the round of the district um, to other parts of the district. So that is why you see, I guess, some labeled Eisenhower, others labeled something else because we kind of pulled uh, from different schools uh, some of our schools had a surplus of a couple on each Chromebook cart, so we were able to pull a few of those and, and go back and forth. Again, except for the ones that we purchased from this other school district, they're all basically the same machine, uh, but just a different label on them. 
Anything to add, Dawn? Okay. No, very well said. And uh, what you said at the very end, um, you know, all of them are the same. They're, they might look a little different. They might be from a different uh, building. But um, when, it, when it comes to Chromebooks, the functionality of them, it doesn't matter what device you have. So. Good question. Is there any plan for sixth and eighth graders to have an opportunity to make up for missing their camp or DC trip? Unfortunately, no. Um, that planning starts quite a while ago and there was, we just couldn't take a chance on, on holding out for either one of those trips, not knowing what the future holds for this year. So we made a decision this year to just cancel those trips and we have no plans to, uh, I guess, try to make them happen even if, uh, even with, when and if we come back to school. Is that fair to say, Paul or Tim? I mean, I think that was our plan moving forward. Uh, with only six football games, cheerleaders only cheering at home three games, do we still pay 150? Kind of seems extreme uh, since no bus driver or gas need to be paid for. Uh, yeah, a lot of questions. I knew that question uh, was like one of them that we've had from others uh, related to. Just keep in mind, cheerleaders are still practicing all the time. There's still uniform costs. There's still all the things associated the whole program, all the cost of the program are still there, except maybe, you know, the buses, but the buses are still going to some of the games, just not with the cheerleaders on it. So that is, you know, whether it's cheerleading or pick another sport or pick another fee, uh, we'll be looking at that. You know, we're going to sit down, we're going to have conversations internally, we're going to go fee by fee, we're going to talk with the coaches, and we're going to find out what's reasonable and what isn't. Because uh, we want to be fair to you, but like I said, you know, we need to be fair to us as well. Because there's still, you know, most people will tell you that, that the costs associated with programs, the majority of those costs are still there. Um, so, so uh, again, but a fair question and, and one that we will uh, certainly address here in the future. Uh, well, uh, we appreciate that instructing is going to be the same way for the whole first quarter, even though it would be good to even though it would be good to be together, the uncertainty is far more challenging. Sure. Just a, another comment about our, 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 our path moving forward. So thank you for that. Uh, we, why do we have a signed waiver for all liability, including negligence, when it's obvious that kids aren't protecting themselves and taking this seriously? Who is going to protect our kids? Will this hurt their grade if they don't participate? Uh, ban, in quotes, bans. Um, if you're talking about like marching band or, or if you talk about marching band, I don't, I don't believe that will affect their grade. Uh, can anybody help me out with that one? I mean, they're there. So really, I mean, if, if you do not want to participate in any of our extracurriculars, you do not have to, and there won't be any consequence to that at all. Um, you know, the, the whole idea of, how and who is protecting our kids. The only comment I'll make to that is, is, you know, it takes a village to protect our kids. We're a piece of that village. We'll do what we can to protect all our kids. You know, our community, our businesses, our, certainly our families, our parents, we all need to do everything we can to protect our kids. And, and at the end of the day, you know, putting yourself in a situation that you feel is dangerous, uh, you know, I would recommend you don't do it. Anyone that feels a situation is dangerous at all, like a sporting event or, or banned. But with that being said, I have complete faith in our instructors that they're going to follow the rules. They're going to stay distance. They're going to do everything in their power to make that particular event um, safe because we want to keep those events moving. Because <laughs> we know if they're not safe, they're going to be shut down. So hopefully I answered that. Uh, I don't think I did a great job at it, but hopefully I uh, took a stab at it. Okay, any other questions that we have for tonight? That was the last one that I see on my screen. Uh, just a quick comment to help answer that. Uh, one of the band parents said that Mr. K uh, put out an email that it will not affect their grade. So, so there's your answer, at least from uh, from, from Mr. Kuzdal. Well, I'm gonna end this then. Um, again, we, we uh, oh, one last question here. Is there a plan for seniors to meet with counselors regarding college apps slash financial aid? 
we have a high school person on the call? Obviously, what I will say is if you reach out to the counselor, if anyone reaches out to the counselor, they're going to work with you on how to do college apps and financial aid, I'm assuming. I believe Jim Jerski's on the call, but he couldn't become a panelist. So cool. I don't want to misspeak, but I did overhear one of our counselors in our PD session today ask how we can do Zoom meetings with our colleges. So I believe they are working on that uh, currently to make that happen, to meet with kids in, in Zoom meetings um, to go over those types of things and due dates. Thank you. Okay, well, it's been just about an hour. So actually that worked out pretty well. I appreciate the, the 77, 80 participants that we had on the call. Uh, we have another one planned for next Wednesday. Again, this is, this is what we're trying to do to, to uh, I guess, help out in any way we can with questions as a, as a time that, that anyone can ask just about anything and we'll do our best to answer it. So we'll plan on meeting at the same time next Wednesday at six o'clock. The link that you used to uh, get on to tonight should work again next week. So if you can bookmark it or keep it, if not, we'll be sending out another reminder to you. So again, thank you. I appreciate uh, everything. The community is doing a great job and uh, stay safe, everyone. Have a great night.